as far as power fantasies go, stopping time has to be up there, right? Everyone, everything stops except for you. Freedom to do whatever you want, rendering your opponents defenseless. And video games are certainly one of the best, if not the best, medium for portraying this ability. And yet I find it disappointing that only a relatively small amount of games allow you to do it. Games like Dishonored, for example, have it as a limited and very powerful ability. And don't get me wrong, I used it a lot whenever I could, but I feel like an entire game could be built around stopping time. And that's exactly what Toho Luna Nights is. And today I'm here to tell you what makes it pretty cool. Toho Luna Nights is a fan game based on the Toho franchise. To those uninitiated, this is a common occurrence. Dozens upon dozens of games have been made by Toho fans, each iterating on the world built by the original developer Zun in their own way. Luna Nights is a game all about Sakuya, one of the most popular characters in the series. If you're not familiar, what you should know about Sakuya is that she's a maid, she can stop time, and she loves throwing knives at her enemies. And yes, that is a JoJo reference, perhaps one of the most vintage ones. The game starts with a very simple premise. Sakuya is stuck in a dream world made by her mistress Remilia, where her powers are severely limited. But in the maid's shoes, you have to explore this world and find a way out. The game is a side-scroller platformer slash action game reminiscent of the Castlevanias of old. When the game begins, you're stuck with a very small moveset. Throw knives and slow time down, that's about it. Start exploring for a bit and you'll realize that the game is actually a metroidvania, meaning you'll have to explore and backtrack to the areas as you acquire new powers. After just a small tutorial, you get the ability to stop time for real, and this is where the real game begins. Like I mentioned before, stopping time is the core mechanic of Luna Nights. Everything you do is centered around it. Many of the enemies have projectiles that are just too fast for you to realistically react to, so stop time and dodge them. Some doors close as soon as you step away from the switch controlling them, so stop time to make it through. Simple ways to explore the mechanic, but it's in the iterations that the game truly shines. The first way you encounter such an iteration is when you run into water for the first time, and soon realize that you can't move in it when time is stopped. This can block your passage, but it can also be used to walk on water and give you access to areas you couldn't get to before. And it doesn't stop there. Later on in the game you'll find platforms that continue moving when time is stopped, enemy attacks that only move when time is stopped, or even things that move backwards in stop time. Learning every way to exploit frozen time is the key to success, as there are many puzzles and hidden unlockables you only get by exploiting these mechanics. There's something truly magical about the first time you realize you can step on the knives you threw during stop time and use them as platforms. But if stopping time solved all your problems, the game would get pretty boring. This is when slowing time comes into play. When you get to the Marisa boss fight and she does her iconic final spark, the game is teaching you something very important. Sometimes, slowing time down is better than stopping time. Her final spark, for instance, is much easier to dodge in slow time than it is in stop time. In fact, many enemy attacks remain as active hitboxes even during stop time, so it's easy to trap yourself between them, making slowing down time more convenient for dodging a lot of things. This is further enforced by the game's near miss or graze mechanic, a gameplay callback to Toho's Danmaku main series of games. By getting close to enemies or their projectiles, you recover health and mana, which is used to attack. Soon you begin to realize that boss fights are all about resource management and strategizing your approach to each attack. It takes quite a bit of trial and error at times, but when fighting the bosses I found myself memorizing which of their attacks was better to dodge in real time, which of them were better to dodge in stop time, and which are better to just slow down time for not to mention which attacks are safe to get in in order to trigger a near miss and recover mana, because trust me, if you don't, you'll run out of mana mid-fight pretty fast. Speaking of boss fights, they are definitely a highlight of this game. In my opinion, a boss fight is the reward for playing the level, a game's climax, 
your reward for getting so far, to face a challenge, and in this game, it's certainly the case. Just in case you haven't been looking at the screen, this game is absolutely beautiful. Its pixel art style is extremely fluid, each animation bringing these iconic characters to life in a very unique way, and boss fights are the culmination of that. Just looking at the boss is fun. And the game looks even prettier in slow time, giving you an opportunity to see the many frames each animation has. This is all enhanced by the amazing, amazing soundtrack. It is a Toho game after all, anything below amazing in the soundtrack department would be unacceptable. You've been hearing it all through this video, and it's difficult to put into words how much fun they make fighting each boss, just to hear the amazing arrangements of their legendary themes in the background. All of that being said, the game is not without its problems. The main one being that the Metroidvania aspect is pretty bare bones. It's there, but don't expect it to be terribly complex. Another problem that might be admittedly more subjective is that after you figure the game out and how to use each of its mechanics, the gameplay can ultimately lean a bit on the easy side, especially for those expecting Toho's usual brand of difficulty. But I suppose this can also be a plus, since the game isn't generally frustratingly difficult. If you're looking for a fun game that explores the mechanics of being able to stop time in a unique way, Toho Luna Nights gets a stellar recommendation from me. The game is relatively short, taking an average of 6 hours to beat, and between the beautiful visuals, great soundtrack, and super fun bosses, I'm sure that anyone could have a great time with it. Long time Toho fan or not, and I think that's what makes it pretty cool. If you liked this video, please consider leaving a like to help the channel out, and subscribing if you want to see more. As usual, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.